Men, and I use the term ever so loosely, uh, this is a customer head uh, on the latest or the most recent engine that I'm rebuilding. And uh, the valves are cut, the seats are cut, uh, it seals up very nicely. Uh, but I'm concerned uh, because there's some damage here on the mating surfaces. Uh, these pits... I'm not concerned about because I'm going to, you know, spray a gasket with copper gasket sealer, put the gasket on there. And these are, you know, little islands, so to speak. But what I am concerned about are these areas here because there's a couple of these striations that run from the combustion chamber all the way through to the outside. And this area here, of course, is an oil drain back hole. And uh, I'm worried about this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out to the milling machine and I'm going to try to skim off about 20 thousandths. Um, these, my calibrated eyeballs say these are about 15 thou, 10, 15, uh, no more than that. So I'm going to try to skim off no more than 20 thou. Uh, one of the things I'm concerned about is if I make the head, uh, well, if I skim any metal off of this head, I'm worried that this area right here is going to hit the spigot that sticks up on the cylinder, uh, thereby preventing it from seating all the way. So I plan on using either a thicker head gasket or two head gaskets. And I think all the gaskets I have in stock right now for these heads are the, uh, the 15 thousandths ones or the 19 thousandths ones, whatever they are. So if I skim off 20 and it's a, you know, a 15 or 20 thou gasket, uh, I'll make up for the amount of metal that comes off of there and maintain uh, a clearance between this area here and the spigot on the top of the cylinder. So let's go out to the dirty shop, set it up, and make it happen. Okay, I uh, will take a quick look at the setup. This side is pretty straightforward. There's an area right here on the head that's flat enough that I could just use a toe clamp and clamp it down to the bed of the lathe. Uh, you definitely do not want to grab any fins because you will break them off. Uh, the other area of caution are the valve guides. Uh, the valve guides sometimes stick out beyond the top of the head. Uh, on this one, I just took a grinder to one and just nicked off a little tiny corner. I'll, I'll show you that when I get it out of there. Let's look at setup on the other side. This is a little more tricky. This area is slanted, and as you tighten the toe clamp down, it just wants to push the toe clamp back out of the way. Uh, in order to prevent that from happening, I took another one, clamped it down on the bed of the lathe, and I have engaged the teeth on this one to the teeth on this one, and this one is now a stop for this one. So I could tighten this one down. It won't slide down this little bit of a slope here and become loose. Uh, we're going to drop the... Uh, cutting tool down to uh, the surface of the head and I'm probably going to take five five thou passes at it, uh, maybe two I don't know, maybe I'll do a ten thousandth pass uh, I don't know, we'll see see what happens when I get started on it anyway, that's the setup, pretty straightforward uh, should work just fine <laughs> oh, and I've only done this once before I did it on my junk practice head and it worked out pretty well so uh, let's see what happens all right, so let's, uh, let's fire this up. I'm going to touch off on the head, back the cutter off, come down, oh, I don't know, five thousandths, and we'll take the first pass.
All right, we made contact. Let's back off. Coming down 5,000. Locking the uh, quill down. And we're going to power feed it across. Well, that looks like it got all the damage. Great. Let's crank this over a little bit, go back the other way, and that should finish it up. Alright, gonna lift the quill up out of the way and see how we did. <clears throat> that looks beautiful. We'll take it inside, get a closer look at it. Okay, here is the uh, as removed from milling machine condition. I'm uh, very happy with that. Uh, you could see, and I, I don't know, maybe it's barely perceivable the, uh, you know, where the cutter left off going one way and then picked up going the other way. Uh, I could feel it just barely. I'm going to take this over to my surface plate. Uh, I got some. Uh, Sandpaper double side tape stuck to it and I'm going to give it a few swipes back and forth and uh, See how that does to it All right, so here's the finished project and I am very happy with that uh, literally a few swipes like a dozen uh, back and forth on a surface plate uh, whatever little I mean, whatever little slight variation there was uh, where the uh, tool pads overlapped uh, is gone. Uh, the finish is excellent. Uh, this is going to seal nicely. Um, after touching off, and I touched off a little heavy. Maybe I was into the material a thousandth or two, and I dialed five in on the uh, quill. Um, you know, maybe I've removed eight thousandths off of this, so I don't even think I'm going to need to put the two gaskets in. 
I'll probably just go with one. But what I am going to do is I'm going to set this on the barrel uh, without a head gasket. And I'm going to make sure that the gasket surface touches the ceiling surface on the cylinder uh, just in case, uh, just in case. I want to make sure they're in contact with each other. And if they are, then I know that this part won't be hitting the spigot on the cylinder and it should go together good. But anyway, uh, very happy with that. That worked out well. Um, uh, the customer should be very satisfied with that. And now I don't have to worry about it developing, uh, you know, a blowing head gasket down the road. This will be good. And as long as I've got you out here, uh, we're going to put the valves back in this in a minute. But as long as I got you out here, I've upgraded my uh, valve job uh, processes uh, a little bit here. Uh, as you may recall from my earlier videos, I would bolt the head to holes in the workbench over here around the edge like this with it hanging off. And uh, there are several holes on this workbench all over the place. So anyway, I got tired of small parts falling through these goddamn holes. And you would not believe the frequency with which uh, a small screw, nut, a bolt, or whatever, a counter pin, a woodruff key, <laughs> these things are like magnets. They just suck the shit and it would disappear on the workbench. Uh, so I plugged all the holes, glued plugs in it, and sealed it all up. Uh, I also had gaps between the boards on the workbench. And uh, let me see, you maybe you could see one. So there used to be one right here. And uh, uh, I took the workbench apart drilled holes through all of these boards and stuck threaded rods in there and pinched it all together as tight as I could get it and then filled the resultant gaps with sealant. So whatever equipment I've got under the bench stays clean and my small parts don't go into these gaps and disappear into that never, never land under the bench. Uh, let me show you the part two of that. The part two of that, of course, was I now needed something to hang onto the heads with. So you've got your basic chunk of steel, four holes in it. Uh, these two holes are for 900 cc heads. These two holes are for 1,000 cc heads. A uh, little bar bolted on the bottom, pinches in the vise like this. And uh, now uh, I bolt my heads up on here. I'll show you. Okay, I use a cutoff piston. To keep the valves up in the head when I'm installing the springs and the keepers, I uh, used to use a you know a up, gobbed up ball of rags to hold them up. This works better. Plop this over the head, or plop the head over the little holding fixture, and there you have it. Run a couple of bolts down through my threaded holes. Okay, I said I was going to show you where I knocked the edge off of the valve guide because it's stuck up above the uh, rocker box uh, mating surface. Well, right there. GoPro doesn't focus real good close. Anyway, just a tiny little zip with a, you know, die grinder. I used a, a three inch disc on it and just took this corner off to make sure that the valve guide was below the mating surface of the rocker box when this thing was sitting on the mill table. Okay, and here's what I used to use to take valves in and out. Uh, this thing, uh, this thing uh, was meant for Chevy small blocks, as I seem to recall when I bought it 40 years ago. Uh, and uh, this, and this, well, this little piece of steel hooked over the studs where the rocker arms would. This thing hooked onto it. And of course these feet uh, compress the uh, upper spring collar. And uh, the, the, I mean, look at this is a, I've been fighting with this thing for 40 freaking years. 
and uh, you, you know you don't get the hooks on there right this thing wanted to slip off one way or the other it was hard to get my fat fingers in between uh, in between these guys over here and uh, you know you could adjust these but by the time you got them adjusted close enough together so they didn't slip off then you couldn't get your hand in there and I've been looking at that thing thinking by God I need a better way to do it so I redesigned it and I came up with this get in there you bastard there it goes I came up with this basically the same type of tool just a little more refined so I'll machine this out a piece of I don't know what that is uh, 5 8 3 quarter square stock machine this clevis and machine this little guy which fits right over the springs very very nicely uh, this is wider in through here so I could get the uh, keys in without fighting with it very happy with this contraption been watching the uh, knife making channels everybody makes a nice handle for their knife I had a couple of pieces of scrap oak laying around screwed them and epoxied them to the handle of this thing uh, this is a nice tool I really like this thing Alright, let's see if I could stuff a couple of keepers in there using the new setup. <laughs> One's in. I'm using my armpit to hold the lever down on this thing. Any other one is in. Man, that is nice. That's the way to go. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was trying to achieve when I started making this. So I knew what I was trying to achieve. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to get there. But there's, shit, there's two days of work in this thing, you know? Uh, anyway, it's done. I am out of here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye.